You are watching the Home Design Mentor channel on YouTube. This is lesson number four on designing our super mega mentioned luxury kitchen. And you may recall last we left off after creating this wonderful florette plaque design. You may have noticed that there were flutes below it, which I hadn't showed you how to do yet. So we're backing up just a little bit. And here we have this column detail that we have from our Kensington Court wood mode kitchen. What we notice is that there are seven flutes, which means that there is a division of 15 spaces. So I take this line at the top of our square or at the bottom of our square of the top of where our plaque is, and I divide that into 15. And once I have that, then I can make seven spaces for crevices or for the flutes where they'll go. And that's pretty simple. So we've made an equal division across the face of the column to start that. Once I have that going, I can draw down that crevice space toward the bottom of the column. I'm just going to make one because you'll see I create a component that we can then duplicate across the face of this column. And that way we are just making one single element as we proceed. This is what's the beauty of SketchUp is that you can make all of these components and all of the duplicate all of these parts and pieces to fit into place as you go along. I'm going to make an indentation in that crevice of about a half an inch, and that looks pretty good. I think half an inch might be a little too much, so I'm going to go in and bring that forward about a quarter of an inch. So we have a quarter of an inch indentation in this crevice space. Now the next thing I need to do is position the top and the bottom of the edge of our crevice. We want the bottom of the crevice to be a little bit higher or, or further away from the base than we do for the top of the crevice to be away from the medallion plaque that's above it or the fluorite plaque that is above it. And we're going to make this component now. So we're going to call this a flute crevice. And that flute crevice, as you see here, has a rounded top, a rounded bottom, and the indentation is actually a half round as it goes into the piece of wood that they've carved out for those pieces of details there at wood mode. To create this fluted shape that I need, I'm going to draw a half round at the bottom of the flute crevice. And when I do that, I can then extrude that upward to create another face that we'll be working with. You'll see there, I've erased that back face that we had put into place. We won't, we won't need that, so we'll eliminate that face on the back of that. Bring that up to the top, and now we have what is our crevice fluted half round shape in there. And I'm showing you a repeat of this from a couple of different angles so that you can sort of see what I've done here. A, a trick that I've created for this is that I made a quarter dome shape for the top and bottom of the crevice and popped those into place by making a very large one and then resizing it. It's very tricky to do that. It takes a lot of time and I don't want to go into too much detail on it because we would be here for quite some time. And it takes a great deal of patience to do something like that. And probably a lot of people won't do it. They'll just make a straight up and down. Whichever you prefer is fine. How much detail do you want to go into? That's the beauty of SketchUp. You can make it as complicated as you want or not. The next thing to do is make a component out of this entire arrangement that we created for this column. And when I do that, it has popped in another face. By the way, we're going to call this component a column. Now that I've made that, it created another face that I have to take out, which I do pretty easily. I have sped up the video here quite a bit so that you can probably slow it down if you need to kind of catch or want to try to do what I've done here. The next thing I want to do is duplicate our column. And the reason I do that is I leave one in place for future use and we just make them unique where we need to in order for them to work for whatever position we're putting them into. Then I move that to the side, either side of the sink cabinet. That was that six inches that we created a long time ago on either side of the sink cabinet. We adjust the base of the column to match the toe kick space that we're working with on our sink cabinet. Now I make two 
columns, one on either side of our sink cabinet, as you can see here, that looks very nice. And that's the reason I did that. It gives it a focal point, pops it out, makes it more of a feature in this kitchen, in this luxury kitchen. And it also makes the sink countertop cabinet space just slightly deeper than the rest of it. Gives you more space around the sink because you know you're always splashing and need a little more space than you normally do around other parts of the cabinet. And it pops it out, once again, makes it more interesting and breaks up that long countertop and that long cabinet space that we have there on that side of the kitchen. Now that we've done that, we've got that started, I want to place these columns at the four corners of each island. And we have two islands, so we're going to be duplicating this for eight times and putting those into place here. And you'll see that I just do parallel and perpendicular to get this started on all four corners of the larger island. And that gets that to set into place. This is the reason I made those rounded corners that way, because I knew I wanted to go and make this column detail at the edges of the cabinets or at the corners of these islands, which makes it a very nice architectural detail for them and makes them stand out a little better and more interesting. The next thing I have to do is adjust them to be at a 45 degree angle to make that corner of those islands. I could do that pretty simply. And I duplicate them then on our smaller island and pop those into place. I'm using uh, the reference point of the corner of the base toe kick and then also using the base board center point of the column detail as a reference point to pop those into the place. The next thing I want to do is go in here and start working on the countertop on the larger island. One side of this island is going to be for bar stools. This island is a total of 48 inches wide. That's a gross area. It, it gets adjusted for the face of the cabinet. But once I push that back and I push it back 18 inches, that leaves two feet for the left-hand side of the island, which will accommodate the cabinets and another six inches to accommodate a pony wall that you'll need for electrical and sort of a structural component to hold up this large island. But the point of doing it this way also is to create a curved detail on the countertop as it transitions from the rounded corner of the island to the bar stool space. And this detail will give more interest and be more in line with the traditional architecture of this kitchen. And it's pretty simple. I make a quarter round circle for each one of those squared off edges that we made as we made the indentation for the countertop material. And you'll see that this looks very interesting and very cool to have that sort of scalloped detail on our large island countertop. That makes it kind of fun. The next thing I want to do is to go to this island face, this large island face that faces the sink cabinet and divide it into two and then start placing some cabinet faces on this side of the large island. And I wanna use that range island group that I had created a little while back. And that way we have two shallow, large, wide drawers, and then we have two deep drawers below and two banks of that so that we have lots of storage, lots of drawer storage space in this kitchen. Another thing I want to do here is go and copy one of my drawer and door cabinet faces, and I'm gonna put that into place. That one is 18 inches wide, so we're gonna make it wider to fit. What we have is 21 inches. So we go in, open it up, make it unique, adjust the frame to be 21, then adjust the drawer and the door to fit, just like we've been doing all along. Just remember, you always wanna go in and make your component unique, because if you don't, your components that you took this from will also change and you don't want that to happen. Then we simply duplicate that door face and put it down here on this second island, which just fits into place. These will be two 21 inch wide door and drawer frames. And I'm gonna duplicate that for the other side of the island and put that into place on our smaller island. And that gives us the faces for those two sides of the small island. The next thing I want to do is go in here and copy this four drawer face frame and then put it into place at the end of the large island. 
that's facing the adjoining room. Now, one thing I need to do is copy that B detail because what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna make these shelves. We still want that B detail around the edges of the openings for our shelves. So I've copied that from that other drawer component that we had created earlier. And you'll see that I go in and put that down. It puts it on the floor and then I have to rotate it upward to be upright. But once I do that, then I can start popping it into place and then adjusting to create a taller shelf below the shallower shelf, which will be on the top. Now, you could do these shelves in any number of ways. It could be just three shelves. It could be just two shelves. But for the sake of just putting something together here for you, I have made four shelves with a shorter shelf on top and then three slightly larger shelves below that. And then to make this a complete component, I have to go back and copy those beaded details, take them out, and then put them back in against the face frame. It's another component trick. You might have noticed that I had my face frame, I had my beaded trim details outside of my face frame, so I need to put those all together to continue with this configuration here. And then what we're gonna do is push back. Remember we made the corners of these islands a one foot radius, so we're gonna push that shelf detail back so that we have 12 inches in depth for our shelves here on this, on this island cabinet that we've created. Next, what I do is go in here and make some groups that are just a shelf, just a rectangular box, and make those fit into each spot of our shelf, including the bottom shelf. And once we have that, we have now set up another face frame shelf component detail that we can duplicate and then take down to our other island because I want to do the same thing and have more shelves in the smaller island. Push back that face of the island so that it fits that one foot depth that we created for this bookshelf face frame. Imagine you can put all of your cookbooks in these shelves. It's a good place for them or you can put objects for display. Once again, you may do something where the shelves are taller or even shallower, but that's kind of a detail that you work out with a client as you move along. And you'll see that I have now created four of these shelf face frame cabinet components that we're working with in this kitchen. And that will wrap us up for today. We have our column base cabinet detail and our bookshelves and face cabinets for these two islands that we have in this super luxury mansion kitchen. Tune in next time. We'll tackle the countertops and start getting toward the appliances and it will get very interesting. You'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the notification bell if you want to be aware of when new videos are posted on my YouTube channel the home design mentor.